Welcome back at everybody into a new video of the creating world. And as you guys can see, I've been busy. I've been laying down the foundations for our massive, massive factory, which is going to be, well, supplied by trucks. And that guy is actually already working, but not as efficiently as I would hope. You see, since the trucks are down here and the items need to go up there for me to store them slash process them, uh, they are using that elevator, so I'm kind of just going with the same thing and using these extracting conveyor belts to extract items. The thing is, this is way too slow. Like, you can see it's barely even making a dent, it's like moving like one item at a time. It's super, super slow, and the belt up here is super, super fast, so... Uh, I, I'll, I'll have to change this. There's no other option. I'll have to change this, uh, because it's, it's, it's not good. It's not good. It's way too slow for what I need it to be. Uh, the truck has been here for like a couple of minutes already, and it's still doing this. Uh, so it, it, it's gonna take a while for him to do that. So I think what I might just do is, is I might just break this one. Let the truck go on his way. Because he is on a special type of programming. We'll get to that. And I'll have to replace this with create stuff. Okay, so this should work a little bit better. Because I do believe that create does have a little bit of an issue with vertical transportation. There's a couple of methods you can do. Get things working vertically with create. Like, for example, you can use fans. And you can even use weight ejectors to send the items flying. Uh, but I believe this is a good option as well. Uh, this will basically guarantee that the items just... Oh, wait. Will it guarantee? I'm not so sure. I guess we'll see now. Oh, okay. Yeah, that perfectly works. That's amazing. That's really, really good. And then I do have a, a draw here. Or a... Are you... Wait, what? Why is this not picking things up, though? It should, right? I'm not. I'm not crazy. What? Maybe I need to put it one lower. Huh? How am I gonna save this now? And yes, of course, how can I forget about the poll I did where I asked you guys if I should call this area of low fast industries or low fast deliveries. Now, I thought about it and I thought about it and I watched the vote on the poll, which low fast industries won. I mean, I was kind of seeing that this one was going to win just how I, or how it sounds like how, the sound of how it, it uh, like how it rolls off your tongue. And I got a better idea. Basically, Vlofast Industry wants, so this entire area is going to be Vlofast Industries. And just this particular building will be the Vlofast Deliveries. So this will be the building for deliveries, but the entire area will be the industry. And I got something cool planned when we get to the subway part of this area. So stay tuned for that. And so we are going to be using this to handle all our ores. And I kind of just want to rotate these drawers because <laughs> I can't see what's going on here now. Uh, so I'm just going to rotate them because this machine is, is occupying a lot of space. And I don't really like it that much. Uh, but also, another thing I noticed is I need to be very, very careful. I'm not going to sort the items here just yet i'm gonna basically send everything that's an ore to come here to then get crushed by these wheels and then we're gonna have a second line of drawers and that's where we're gonna start like properly filtering some of these things uh because what i'm gonna try to what i'm trying to do right here um is have a primary sorting area uh which is this one where we are where we are right now uh, because this area will have to deal with steel, black, cobblestone, uh, cobble deep slate, and stuff like that. 
And then after we process through this, uh, here, on this secondary wall uh, of drawers, we'll have to output the cobble deep slate and uh, the cobblestone that comes out from crushing these ores and the experience uh, as well, right? Because when you crush it, yeah, you also get these nuggets of experience. Those need to be sorted outside as well. Uh, so then I have a wall with only the ore processing, like the, what's it called? The crushed version of the item, right? Yeah, the, the raw version, the crushed raw version. And then all of these will then be into a separate zone where we could probably just store them and don't really use them. The only exception is the steel. Because the steel, we go into some automations. Uh, we're going to be using this steel whenever we have it being delivered here to deal with some things. That's why I have this draw control here so I can now export the items through this side as well. So I, I left myself a little bit of a gap. And we have this machine to deal with yours. So we're going to take a look at how this handles the first batch of items. It's it's a lot of items. But it, it did actually manage it. Which is great. Uh, though, uh, oh, it's going to get stuck. Oh, 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 no. Gonna, oh, well, I got more drawers. So I guess it's not really going to get stuck. But yes, we need some upgrades for these. So I guess I'll have to go and grab a bunch of upgrades. For the time being, I'll just leave them with some extra drawers to handle those resources. Uh, I should avoid these, actually. But yeah, this is what I mean. We're going to have a lot of experience. going to have a lot of cobblestones just hanging here and those we do not want. Then, of course, I'm actually pondering if I should or shouldn't wash these, get even more stuff. But I don't think we need to wash these. I think washing these will be an extra nuisance for me because I have to have to deal with other items, inputs and outputs and stuff like that. And I don't think I want to have to deal with that at the moment. Yeah, because we can see we just process through a very, very high amount of items in a couple of seconds. That's crazy. Well, something happened and that took quite a long time from my recording because I had a crash. Yes, my actual first crash. Yes, that was bad. Uh, and I kind of lost hope and thought that I may have just lost my world. And it happened when I tried to place this lava bucket. And basically it was a little bit of an issue with rubidium. So I went ahead and talked with a friend of mine from the FTB team one of the developers of the FTB team and he actually told me to swap rubidium and use embedium and I did that and well as you can see we're in the world we're playing we're doing things we have an auto cooker here and we have some items being cooked over here as well all thanks to that little tip so I'm actually gonna go ahead and make sure that I switch out and update the pack itself the version of the pack itself uh, on the curse launcher so if you're playing through there, you won't be going into this issue. And with that switch, we actually have these things right here. We now have the wires. You can see the immersive engineering wires. Though, for some reason, we can still see the, the wheels, though. No, it's, I wish we could, but we, we don't see the wheels. But it's okay, we can see the wires. It's, you know, it's so slowly but surely all things are coming together. And I did a few extra upgrades up here in the base. I actually extended this platform a little bit so we can have a few more very cool machines. For example, this one is the one that we're going to be using to automate automatically polish the red quartz. We have this one where we put uh, powder the obsidian and then it will give us the sturdy sheets. We have this one, which is basically a sawmill. We put logs, you get stripped logs. And I did actually went ahead and make this thing right here where we can put items to be deployed for example if you put logs then up here we can put like for example andesite and we'll get the andesite casings of course we have the andesite casing already automated so this is more for brass casings and train casings and i went ahead and put it over here i was actually able to quite neatly fit it here most of these machines for example this one as well i kind of make like a second floor uh, and as you can see, we have lava for that spout and then mechanical prices for the sturdy sheets. So I think this area is just getting better and better. 
And now I also link this excavator into the steel factory and the steel factory itself. I linked up into this truck station, which still needs all the details that the other one has. Like the other one looks a lot better than this one. So I'm still going to have to update the, the blueprint for this one. And as you can see, uh, oh, this guy is actually waiting to go there. But I have a train that already comes here and picks up the stuff. It only picks up when there's 50, uh, not 50, uh, 64. It's okay. I'm still going to send these ones here. And I have these drawers that are like backlog. But they should never actually be needed. <laughs> just It's just a precaution, basically. And then all the items come into here. And I also, of course, I have that one hooked up and I have got these two hooked up into here as well. So if we go over here, we already have copper, silver, iron, lead, and gold. And we have steel at the back here. And I lost so much steel because I had this void upgraded, but I didn't have the storage upgrade. So I had like third, uh, like what? 4k i like i had double this in steel and i just lost that and there's a b over there and i added electrum production which means now we are also automating electrum whenever we're getting silver and whenever we're getting gold basically the way this does it is whenever gold and electrum come by it will put it into this belt it will split it some of it will go into the drawers and some of it will go into this uh, kind of clogged up and complicated way of automating Electrum. Uh, basically, this is putting together a gold drawer and a silver drawer, taking out the items, which isn't actually taking out the items because, uh, well, I still got a lot of silver here. Uh, but this belt's not moving. <laughs> I gotta move on this belt somehow. Uh, I'll probably need to figure out a way of moving that one. Because, uh, yeah, this is very clogged up and close together, as you can see. But that shouldn't be that much of an issue. But it, it, it's functional. But in order for it to function, you can see that we have a tank here. This tank is Creosote Oil. Now, I'm not sure this is enough oil uh that we're producing to keep up with this demand uh, as you can see it's on 186 or 187 thousand at the moment and i believe the tank was full just a second ago uh so i'm not sure we're producing enough for that thing to run but at the same time it's not really that big of an issue because if we can't have enough power to mix things together that just means we're going to be accumulating more silver and more gold and it doesn't really matter uh, because we don't even need that crazy amount of electro being produced we just need some of it every now and then now i want to go ahead and start automating a bunch of things uh, and in order to automate a bunch of things i need a bunch of machines most of those machines use for example light engineering blocks which means i want to automate all of these parts and we're getting everything we're getting iron so we just need to press down the iron and then we get ourselves an iron sheet metal if we put it together in a, a crafter four crafters or we use an assembler which is probably what we're gonna go with um for this one we can easily use the crafters because it's a nice recipe, you know, it's a 3x3 three three recipe. Uh, but for the other one, it's not really that great of a recipe. Because it's separated. And I really don't know how I can do these ones separated. So I'm just not gonna mess with these funky recipes. Whenever I see any, any of these recipes, I'll go with an assembler. Because I believe it's an easier way for us to do this thing. And every now and then I might just use another assembler for aesthetic purposes. Basically, the assembler is an auto crafting table as well. Uh, it just basically puts the items in. You tell it what do you want it to craft and we'll craft it. Amazing, right? Now, I also still need to link these two together and then into our system over here, uh, which I may just do underground. I don't really think I need to do anything crazy with these two so i may just like take them underground 
and then make them like join the belt here i think that will look that will look okay right yeah i think that will look okay uh which oh but i do have the train tracks here hmm gonna be a little bit tricky to deal with these ones because i didn't really thought about the train tracks being there so for example this would be a uh, an assembler oh we can give it a bunch of recipes oh that oh that's even better so for example if we just go ahead and grab ourselves a stack of steel for example so let's see if this is going to work basically i want him to do this this recipe but then i also want him to work and do this recipe and non-recursive use uh, recursive use of ingredients i guess yes you should have a recursive use and if we give him like that we would only need to give it power would you would you look at that it's it's actually making items it's actually crafting a bunch of these scaffoldings and these steel rods Okay, so why is it not taking the items out though? Non-recursive, recursive, non-recursive. I don't know what's going on. Uh, probably need something like this here. Yeah. But what about the rods? Oh, it doesn't care about the rods. It's just, it's just going to stockpile rods and keep using them to make the steel scaffolding. Because this is the last one. So this is the last piece of the puzzle. So it's only going to care about these ones. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Because that means I can just, for example, put a, a draw here. And I have, well, kind of steel scaffolding automated. Would you take a look at that? <laughs> we have this process automated for steel scaffolding. Well, I just need to actually just take this all the way, like, or take the steel from there all the way into here, uh, which can be tricky. Um, how am I gonna do this, really? I could use belts. I could definitely use belts. But I kind of want to play around with the weight ejector. That'd be cool. So I came up with this, <laughs> a launcher for uh, basically the steel. It's just going to keep launching the steel until it completely fills in this drawer. And then this will automatically start inputting the items into this assembler. And then I probably will let this guy completely fill up. Then this guy completely fill up. And oh, but this guy will never completely fill up though. Ew. That might be a little bit of a, a little bit of an issue uh so i need to probably link a redstone link here a switch so basically whenever this thing is full this guy will just shut itself off well there we go it is automated and it is now stopped because i moved this a little bit lower uh like the, the, it's complicated the way that this was working because i had to switch off this side some reason this side was not switching off so i got two links and it, it it is now stopped so i'm happy with that well this system is not really gonna work as i want it to work because this thing completely filled up and then it started to completely overflow and overflow and overflow so i need a better input way so just to make sure that this thing doesn't like overclock and i've been taking a look at like all the belt things from from uh, immersive engineering and they, they don't really have a, a good way of controlling this uh, besides this this redstone controlled version of a belt which may be the solution for this um as long as it doesn't really continue to extract because if it always continues to extract then that's a bad thing yeah see this is what i mean 
whenever it gets to this point, it just starts clogging up and putting in more than it should. But this is where I came up with this idea, where we use this guy, our good, trust and handy hopper with this system, which means that he should stop inputting items into here. And then I can just take some of these back and make sure that this thing is not clogged at all just like so my inventory is so full that i can't even manage this <laughs> like this happens way too often every now and then my inventory is just it's just a mess so i'm just gonna try and remove most of these things out of here there we go then i need to rearrange some of this setup so it goes on and does this and then I need to reattune this really because this is not <laughs> really doing anything right now I need to resync this and to resync the weight ejector you just shift right click into where you want it to toss the items and then you can place it anywhere as long as it is within the same line and it does it like it has nothing obstructing it and then we gotta go and do this and then of course this doesn't recognize the slag because that's a steel drawer so only steel will end up in this drawer right here and then we have it we have this thing automatically set up we can actually store away a bunch of these things and whenever we use this or whenever we take some of the, this steel scaffolding it will just restart our system the hopper will let itself start this guy will also start working and this means that this system for now it is safe and to bring down the items from down below i just decided to actually use this belt because i really think it looks cool you know since we have that belt over there as well and i really like that one i thought well why not just have this one as well and it's taking all the items from those guys into here of course all of them are off because we do not have enough power to run all of them at the same time uh we need to expand our power plant over there to having six more of those but before we get six more of those we need to actually make a lot more bioethanol because we're not making enough you know we, we only have a tiny farm dealing with that so we have to fix that issue we gotta make something bigger something better that's making tons of bioethanol it's gonna probably feel like three extra tanks back here to just power all of these machineries we do have a backlog of energy but i'm not really fancying on using it at the moment of course we still have a lot of decorations and all those things to do that factory is coming alive this factory is going to take several episodes to finish because there's several things that need to be built into this factory we already have this one at the moment which is pretty cool pretty handy the steel scaffolding there's uh the next automations will require some steel and some iron and some copper and stuff like that so this thing has to start working and producing a lot of resources but that's all gonna come in the next episodes and unfortunately that's all the time i have for today this episode was not very <laughs> fruitful because i had a lot to think about or a lot to plan around here i had some issues with the back where i wasn't able to play in the world but i fixed those update is out in curse forge already so go ahead and play the pack through there if you want to and i will be going away from this monday to next wednesday so i'll not be here hopefully i can still put out a video in the middle let's let's hope i can i'll not be at home so probably like don't count on me having a video but hopefully i will have a video in the middle so hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to like subscribe if you haven't and see ya in the next one bye